This is what Harold Stewart has to say about the Tendai school of Buddhism. Saicho, 767-822, who was posthumously honored with the title of Dengyo Daishi, brought back the doctrines of the Tendai school from Mount Tiantai in Chekyang province, South China, whence it derives its name. The Tendai Shu maintains that it is the Ikayana, or one vehicle, in which all beings can travel to enlightenment. As Tendai reveals the true universality of the Mahayana, which can comprehend everything from the loftiest metaphysics to the lowliest superstition, it became the all-embracing parent from which the new developments of the Kamakura period, Jodo Shinshu, Shinshu, Zenshu, and Nishrenshu, were to spring. In my ten-foot bamboo hut this spring, there is nothing. There is everything. For the unenlightened person, samsara and nirvana are separated by an astronomical abyss. But to prajna, or the insight of a fully enlightened one, samsara is nirvana. The ephemeral elements of existence and the ultimate suchness are one. We can see this identification of the moon of Buddhahood with the wheel of existence. While the violent winter wind blows by, one round moon rolls through the gloomy sky. The whole problem of the way for the ignorant person thus resolves itself into how to transform samsara into nirvana, or better still, to realize that they were never two. Defiling illusion is even now pure enlightenment. Without mud there can be no lotus, or, as Basho phrased it, the snowy lotus bloom, it does not spurn birth from the mud to which its seeds return. The psychological and social explosions provoked by a repressive and misapplied moralism, whether religious or secular, have been manifested many times in history. To live up to high moral principles by one's own efforts, to try to make one's behavior logically consistent with the demands of social conformity, to be forever criticizing and condemning in terms of right and wrong, good and bad, both oneself and others, this is the true secret of unhappiness. But the repressive rods and censorious axes of the public moralist and indignant custodian of other people's good conduct are always with us. It is not this imprudent adherence to one's opposite judged good and suppression of the other deemed bad which Buddhism proposes by sila or precepts, but a radical transformation of man's original ignorance and defilement by desire and aversion, the fertile black mud into the white lotus of purity and illumination. In this way the demons are converted into the guardians of the Dharma instead of being cast into inner darkness to plot subsequent revenge. Thus, samsara can really be turned into nirvana, for at the moment of awakening the five aggregates of the transient self become the corresponding but purified attributes of the Buddha. As its principal scripture, Tendai chose the Siddharma Pundarika Sutra, the lotus of the true law certainly the most revered of all the Buddha sutras throughout the Far East. The Bodhisattva of Alakishvara in China, Kuan Yin, and in Japan, Kanan, who was undoubtedly the most widely beloved and worshipped Bodhisattva in Mahayana countries, figures largely in its ritual and iconography, for the 25th chapter of the Lotus Sutra is devoted to his praise. As his name indicates, Kanon is the Lord who, on hearing the cries of all sentient beings in distress, halts on the very threshold of nirvana, and looks down on them with mercy, and so he may justly be taken as the very archetype of universal karuna, or compassion, exemplifying the sixth paramita, or perfections of virtue, by which the bodhisattva qualifies for Buddhahood.